The refugee camp at Janine in the West Bank is a perfect, albeit tragic, symbol of Israel's brutal occupation and aggression against the Palestinian people. I'd ask the House to imagine a child of Palestine in 1948, and imagine that this child was one of the 700,000 Palestinian children, women and men that were forcefully removed from their home during the Nakba. This child lost everything, their home, their security, their future, their homeland. They were forced into a refugee camp and they waited for the world to act. The world didn't act. That first refugee camp was destroyed in a snowstorm. And so it was that this child was forced again to move to what became known as the Janine refugee camp. And again, the child hoped that the world would act to allow them to return home, but the world didn't act. This child grew up in that refugee camp, depending on charity, when all they wanted was to go back to where they came from. And imagine that child had a child. That child's, child's birth was just born 52 miles as the crow flies from the birth place of Jesus Christ. That child was born in time for the Israeli invasion of the West Bank in 1967. That child and their child again lived under Israeli occupation. And another Palestinian generation was to live through that occupation, discrimination and the denial of the most fundamental of human rights. That child and their child still wanting to return home, still waiting for the world to act, but the world didn't act. And imagine that that child had their own child born at the time of the Intifada and the ongoing Israeli raids that left three generations living in constant fear. They watched as their, so their camp was subjected to Israeli attack after Israeli attack as vital utilities were destroyed on a systematic basis. They were subjected to collective punishment and persistent breaches of international law. And in 1993 and 1995, they would have witnessed the signing of the Oslo Accords and they hoped against hope that the world was finally acting, but it wasn't. Because from day one, Israel breached the condition of the Accords that transferred control and administration of the West Bank to the Palestinian Authority. And the hope was finally shattered in April 2002 when Israel launched what it called Operation Defensive Shield. 400 homes were destroyed and hundreds more were severely damaged. Estimates suggested that 500 people were killed by Israeli forces. A UN envoy at that time compared the camp to an earthquake zone. The BBC reported that 10% of the camp was virtually rubbed out by a dozen armoured Israeli bulldozers. Their child, uh, the, the, that, that child and their child and their child waited again for the world to act, and it didn't. And imagine somewhere along the line yet another child was born. The child of a child of a child of a child that was forced out of their home during the Nakba. And the Nakba became a daily lived horrendous reality of each generation. Israeli invasions virtually on an annual basis, ostensibly raids targeting Palestinian militants, but every single objective observer that has reported on these instances has described indiscriminate collective punishment operations that serve to destroy lives, destroy homes, destroy hope. And the child of 2023 just like the child of the 1990s and the child of the 1960s and the child of 1948 waited and waited and waited for the world to act, but the world didn't. Not when other children were killed in Israeli attacks, not when services often funded by the international community were destroyed, not even when in May 2022 Israeli forces murdered the journalist Shireen Abu Akla, who was simply doing her job in telling the truth of what was happening in Janine refugee camp. The world didn't say stop, the world the international community turned away. And because the world didn't say stop, Israel didn't stop. Another child of Palestine, another generation of Janine were abandoned to Israeli occupation and apartheid. 
And imagine what it must be like for the child of 1948 and their child and their child and their child when on the 3rd of July in 2023, Israeli forces again invaded the refugee camp. When the estimated population of 14,000 refugees were again terrorised, when according to the Palestinian Red Crescent, 3,000 of those people had to be evacuated, when according to Medicine Sans Frontiers, Israeli military bulldozers had destroyed multiple roads into the camp, quoting, making it nearly impossible for ambulances to reach patients, when Palestinian paramedics had been forced to proceed on foot in an area with active gunfire and drone strikes, and when Israeli forces fired tear gas into a government hospital when at least 12 people were killed, including five children, when, with over 100 seriously injured, when 20 of them were in a critical condition. Imagine for one minute what hope remains for that child of 2023. What does their parent of the 1960s tell them? What would their parent of the 1990s tell them? What lessons would they take from the lived experience of their parent that was forced from the place that they call home in 1948? That the world would finally act? Most likely not. But here today, I want to send a message to the Palestinian child of 2023, to today's children of Janine. And that message is a crystal clear one that the people of Ireland stand with you. We stand against the aggression, the annexation, the occupation and the apartheid that defines your existence. But the words of our message must, must be met with actions. The world must finally respond appropriately to Israeli war crime, crimes. And Tanisha, we know others will refuse to do so. Shame on them, I say. So Ireland must lead the way. We must lead the way with our words, which this House is generally united upon. And I welcome the Tarnish's speech today. And he unequivocally and rightly places the primary responsibility for the deteriorating situation on the occupying power that is Israel. But we also must lead the way with real, tangible measures that shows the world and most importantly shows the children of Janine that we want no hand, act nor part in the systematic destruction of the Palestinian people. We should, of course, seek to build consensuses and support from others, particularly within the EU. But we should also be very clear. If they won't move, we will. And as a starting point, Tarnish, the government must immediately move to progress the illegal Israeli Settlements Divestment Bill 2023 or, um, brought forward by Sinn Féin TD John Brady. And the bill simply prevents Irish taxpayers' money from being invested in companies that profit from Israel's illegal occupation and settlement expansion. It's actually shameful that our monies have been invested in such companies in the first place, but it is inexcusable that government have sought to frustrate and delay the Sinn Féin bill. Wait nine months, says the government, just as every child of Palestine since the Nakba of 1948 have been told to wait. Likewise, when it comes to recognising the state of Palestine, the official position of this House, wait, says the government. For the Palestinians, it is always a waiting game. Meanwhile, our government complies with EU accelerated procedures when it suits Israel. Israel actually enjoys what is officially called a preferential trading relationship with the European Union that is worth billions of euro in trade to a state that ignores, disregards and breaches UN resolutions and international law every single day. Why don't we tell Israel to wait? To wait until they comply with international law, to wait until they end their occupation, their annexation, their illegal expansion of illegal settlements and their ongoing brutal apartheid of the Palestinian people, or to wait until they engage constructively with their Palestinian neighbours and reach a peace settlement that upholds the rights of the Palestinian people to their dignity, to their human rights, to their own state, free from apartheid, free from occupation, free from military aggression. Because it is simply not conceivable to tell another generation of Palestine children that they must wait. It is time for the world to act. But Tanishta, it is time for Ireland to lead the way.